Would you love to know how to actually have greater abundance and freedom and flow in any area of your life that you would love that? Hi, I'm Mary Morrissey. I'm the author of two best-selling books, one of which, Building Your Field of Dreams, became a PBS special. And now in this short video, I'm going to share a number of things with you, one of which is what I learned from my granddaughter about that native desire in every one of us for more. After investing the last 40 plus years of my life studying and applying and mentoring others in transformational principles, I found that every single one of us wants to live a life of abundance and freedom. Its, its spirit in us is seeking to express its nature, which is freedom and abundance. And so every one of us wants to experience that. Now, not everyone may be able to say this out loud, but there is a yearning and a longing that's in every single one of us, and that includes you. Now, this longing to be abundant goes deeper than just having lots of money. It's about being wealthy in every area of our life where we have results, and not just being wealthy in one area and bankrupt in another. For example, you want to enjoy vibrant health, have fulfilling relationships with those around you, enjoy what you do for a living, and at the same time, have time freedom and money freedom. That's in your nature to want that kind of freedom, that kind of liberty. As a student and a teacher of what brings transformation, I've studied many, many, many books in over 40 years on the subject of the art and the science of transformation and abundance. So today, I want to share my top three books on abundance that I have in my library and a key takeaway from each. So what would be the number one book that I've studied over many, many years? This one. And this is a first printing of this book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, many, many people have read this book over the years, but there's a difference between reading the book and applying the book and studying the book so that you become what it is that it's teaching. Think and Grow Rich is actually a curation of the 13 most common success habits of, over, of more than 40 millionaires. And Napoleon Hill studied their life, their habits, their way of thinking, their way of making decisions, their way of overcoming problems, the way of thinking about challenges. Now, the starting point, Hill says in here, the starting point of all achievement is desire. It's the desire for more, that urge for more. He says, keep this constantly in mind. Weak desire brings weak results, just as a small fire makes a small amount of heat. Now, it may be stating the obvious, but growing rich starts with a desire to be wealthy in all the areas of your life. The desire discussed in here is not a simple kind of wishing, kind of hoping, kind of sort of. It's not that. Kind of and sort of creates kind of sort of results. This is an intense, burning desire. And it's coupled with a plan and then a persistence to operate from that plan and change that plan as you get feedback and how the plan's working. Napoleon Hill presents a six-part method to ensure that you actually have a burning desire. So think right now of something that you would love to have more abundant in your life. Would you love more abundance in your relationships? Would you love that love of your life? And really feel that you're wealthy in the area of your love life and in your relationships. Would you love to have more money in your bank account and feel freedom to go where you want to go and do what you want to do and give what you want to give? Fix in your mind whatever it is that you would actually want. Fix in your mind the exact desire that you would love. And then determine exactly, number two, what you intend to trade for that result. You have to trade anything that's unlike what it is you would like. You have to trade your resentment in order to have love. You have to trade inertia in order to move something forward. Determine exactly what you're willing to trade so that you can have the thing you want. Number three, establish a definite date by which you attend to achieve that result. Make it, make it a, a date that you can actually think, this could actually happen in six months. This could actually happen in a year. So you establish a date so that your energy has a date to move towards. And then number four, and this can take some time, you actually create a definite plan to move yourself from where you are to that result. And then you take the first step immediately. Once you have the plan, you take the first step immediately. There's power in that. Then number five, put the four items above into a clear, concise sentence describing each part. And read that statement aloud twice a day, in morning and at night. The principle here is that desire has ways to transmute, transform into its physical equivalent. It's doing it anyway, only now it's the conscious use of this power. This is the beginning of the key principle of the book. 
The subconscious mind acts beneath the surface of our awareness to accomplish what it is directed by our conscious mind to accomplish. And you can use this power intelligently and you actually change the results on the landscape of your own life. Think and Grow Rich. Second book, written in 1910 by Wallace Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich. Science of Getting Rich, 86 pages, little tiny book with a walloping message that can be applied to really transform your ability to allow yourself to have more abundance in your life. And I've studied this book for several decades. And there was a time in my life when my friend Bob Proctor and I were having breakfast. We've been friends for many, many years. And I was talking and sharing something that was going on. And he says, you need to study science of getting rich. It's probably 20, 25 years ago. And I said, oh, I've read that book. I've got it on my shelf. I probably read it three or four times. And he goes, well, you don't know the book. I can tell by the way you're speaking. You're making agreement with lack and limitation. He says, I can hear it. He says, get that book out and really study it and apply it. So I did. It completely changed my life. And one of the key takeaways from this book is that there are four parts to the science of getting rich. Number one is learning how to think in a certain way. For tens of thousands of years, humans could have had light after dark, but we didn't, not because the law of electricity wasn't here. We didn't know how to work with the law of electricity in a certain way. Once we learned how to do that, we could bring light after dark any place we wanted all around the globe when we worked in a certain way. Abundance works along certain vibrational lines as well. And when you learn to think in a certain way, you're on your way. Then you couple that with learning to act in a certain way, in partnership with thinking in a certain way. You learn to do that, not just from a spirit of hope and lack and wishing for things to go do, get better. You do that in the spirit of gratitude so that you're coming from. Gratitude is the frequency that's harmonious with abundance. Thinking in a certain way, acting in a certain way, in the spirit of gratitude, all the while practicing being a person of increase wherever you are. Now, it takes some time to understand what this really means and to incorporate it into our lives, but it is a key to the doorway to freedom that you dream and desire of. Four simple steps, four powerful steps, they change our lives. Now, why this matters to you is that it's natural in you to want more. My granddaughter, when she was five years old, flew to Oregon, where I was living at the time, and I got her for a whole week. And I picked her up in a new SUV that I had that in those days, you know, 15 years ago, had this drop down, a brand new thing in cars that there was a drop down video player. So my granddaughter's in the back seat and I've got her all strapped in and I say, Allie, look at this. And I turned on Cinderella. She had her little headsets on and it was about a 45 minute drive out to my house. She was so thrilled and excited when she got out of the car and she could hardly wait to have us go someplace else so she could keep watching her movie and put other movies in. So that went on the first day, that went on the second day, and the third day when we went to get in the car, I said, well, would you like to watch something while we're driving today? And she goes, yes, I'll watch something, but you know what I really wish? I said, Ellie, what do you really wish? She says, I wish this car made cookies and cakes. <laughs> and I, so I gave her a hug and I thought, that's so nature in every single one of us, to attain a particular good and enjoy that good and then spirit speaks to us again and says, and now for your next creation, and now for the next good and now for the next difference that can happen. So this is the science of getting rich. It's in your nature to want more. You can be totally grateful for the life you have and live in gratitude and still lean into the greater, fuller life. Book three, Working with the Law. I mentioned earlier that I've been studying work, transformation, how results occur and helping others change their results over many, many years. I've had the privilege of working with people from all over the world, tens of thousands of people over time. As I began my study in 1971, by 1973, I had moved to Phoenix, Arizona to study with the man who was the author of this book, Raymond Hollowell. He had a small seminary. He was training people from all over the world in both the art and the science of transformation based on all the world's religions, the emerging science, and psychology. It was a beautiful piece of work that he was doing. He collated that work in his seminal book called Working with the Law which translates the 11 invisible laws that govern the visible measurable results we call our own. It doesn't just happen to us, it happens with us, the results we have. Now, one of the laws that he mentions in this book is called the law of supply. And the law of supply states three principles. Number one, there is unlimited supply of every good that we can imagine. 
We know today, through quantum physics, there is absolutely no limit. We, every, that, what they call it now like dancing filaments of light, string theory, that are sitting in superposition, unlimited energy to become whatever good we imagine. So in the late 50s, Raymond Hollowell is stating that as well. There's unlimited supply for every good that we could imagine. Number two, you and I are entitled to a full and ever-increasing supply of everything we would need or desire to live a life we love living. There's no lack or limitation in the universe, in nature. There's lack or limitation in our minds. But there's an unlimited supply for you. So you're having your good in no way takes away someone else's option, opportunity to have what they would really love in their life. Number three, everything comes from one infinite source. There's not all these different sources. Your, your work is not your job, is not your source. The infinite is your source. Your job is a channel of that source. And you're bringing forth good and you're allowing yourself to receive good for the participation you have in whatever work you're doing. But your work is not your source. The infinite is your source. And when you reach a higher state, then you'll develop an image of a next highest state because that's what life is seeking to do with every one of us. So what would you love? You want more money? More clients? More of something else? Just remember, there's an unlimited supply for whatever it is that you would love, for whatever good you can imagine. You are entitled to a full and ever-increasing supply of anything that you need or desire. The spirit in you is seeking that good. And everything comes from one infinite source. There are multiple channels of good, but only one source. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, then please share it. And go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. And here's a question for you. What's one of your favorite books on the subject of abundance? Or what's an insight or a breakthrough that opened up for you as a result of watching this video? Go ahead and share your thoughts with me in the comment below. I'd love to hear from you. I want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you real soon. Bye for now.